There are a lot of ingredients that must come together for severe thunderstorms to flourish. If even one of those ingredients don't come together perfectly, it can lessen the severe threat or kill it altogether, leaving nothing but blue skies. I'm headed home. There wasn't any storm initiation anyway, so it looks like we're on to tomorrow. But sometimes, on rare occasions, the ingredients come together perfectly, and the result is a day that would be talked about for a very long time. Stop, stop up here, stop up here, stop, 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 stop. Whoa! Holy Jesus! Okay, uh, we may need to turn around. Okay, hold on. April 22nd, 2020 was one of those days. This is the story of the Springer, Oklahoma tornadoes. On day four, the Storm Prediction Center was already highlighting North Texas and Southern Oklahoma for a severe weather risk on the 22nd of April. And on day three, an expansive slight risk was issued. Finally, on day one, the SPC had upgraded a large portion of North Texas and Southern Oklahoma to an enhanced risk, including a 10% hatched area indicating the potential for tornadoes EF2 or stronger. Early that morning, after looking over weather models, I located two areas of potential tornadic activity later that afternoon. The southern mode in southeast Texas, and the northern mode in southern Oklahoma and north Texas. The only problem was, the two target areas were almost 300 miles apart. I'd have to weigh the pros and cons of each, pick one, and stick to it. The benefit of going with the southern target is that there is a much higher likelihood of tornadic storms, it is a much shorter distance, and the atmosphere is still primed for strong tornadoes. However, the downsides would be the possibility of storms clustering together, reducing the tornado threat, and the big problem, trees. The East Texas jungle offers extremely poor visibility. On the other hand, the northern target had much better visibility in the plains of Oklahoma, a more discreet or isolated storm mode increasing the tornado threat higher, and if storms formed, the atmosphere would be even more unstable than to the south. But, it was a much longer drive, and the biggest drawback was the threat was very conditional. If the morning precipitation didn't move out quick enough, the atmosphere wouldn't have enough time to destabilize again, and there would be no storms at all in the afternoon. Despite this, I decided to take the risk and go with the northern target, and boy did it pay off big. I started moving north on I-45 toward what would eventually be the southern mode storms. Once I arrived, the storms looked how I feared they would, clustered, weak, and messy. Update. Time is 12.24 p.m. Yeah, that's right. I am currently, uh... But I'm somewhere on 45. I'm just getting outside of the precipitation, as you can probably see. Um, so from this point forward, uh, I'm gonna head just a little bit more north so I can get out of uh, all of the precipitation and take a look at the, the models and see how they're progressing. And then I will probably be heading up towards Dallas. Storms are organizing to my south. They just still look a little bit sloppy. There's a little bit of a broad rotation in some of them, but for the most part, they don't look particularly good. Okay, that's enough of you. Yeah, so I'm gonna go and do my restroom break real quick, and then uh, we're gonna need to make this fast because it looks like there is cumulonimbus clouds going up just west of Dallas. And those are the storms that were very conditional, but if they were going to go up, they were going to have the potential for strong tornadoes. And it does look like the potential is growing for them, for the storms to actually form. So we're going to make this stop pretty quick, and we're going to get out of here and start heading north again. And uh, try to get into Dallas, and then move west of Dallas. I looked over quickly. While I, uh, while I was sitting in the gas station parking lot, I looked over a couple of things, and it looks like the best chance for tornadoes that we have is going to be on the dry line just west of Dallas. We now have a cumulus field that is forming right along the dry line, so I think that's
that's going to be our target. There's no more watching, no more waiting. This is actively chasing our target area now. So now we're heading up to just northwest of Dallas and hopes to find a, a tornado or just a supercell in general. So for the next 45 minutes, we're just going to be cruising and see what we can see. And uh, I'll update you whenever we get closer to Dallas or if anything exciting happens. Once briefly looking over model data again, I continued north on 45 and watched on radar what appeared to be developing storms in southern Oklahoma. I positioned myself in Gainesville, Texas and found a driveway to watch the storms form to see which would be my eventual target. While watching the cluster of developing supercells, I had a little trouble positioning myself to record them. That was a lot bigger of a hole than I thought it was. <laughs> Whoops. However, after my mini heart attack, I began to take particular interest in the supercell west of Ardmore, Oklahoma that was rapidly strengthening. I began moving north and crossed the border into Oklahoma. All right, update. Time is 3.57 p.m. Take exit onto this new storm that's now north of Ardmore heading towards Springer and maybe Sulphur, Oklahoma. And it is currently severe warned. It has been severe warned for a little while now. And it has some nice rotation on the south side and I actually just went over a hill back there and got a quick glimpse of the base of the storm and it, it does have a lowering and it does look to be uh, a more organized lowering than what I had seen previously on the other storms. So it looks like this is going to be our target storm here. I uh, went a lot further than I thought I was going to, going pretty far into southern Oklahoma at this point. But, I mean, you can't say no to a storm that looks this good. As I got closer and closer to the storm, I began getting glimpses of a large wall cloud over the hills. I pulled over on the side of the road directly in the path of the strengthening wall cloud. Rapid rotation in a bright inflow region on radar showed that the storm was gulping in warm moist air fueling its engine. As the wall cloud moves overhead, the inflow winds begin to scream out of the south and a beautiful clear slot develops, tightening the circulation. All signs say a tornado is imminent. After marveling in the beauty for a moment, I got back into the truck and raced after the storm that was now ahead of me and quickly moving away. About two minutes into my pursuit, the inevitable begins to manifest. Is that a tornado? Oh, that may be a tornado. Oh, that's a funnel cloud. It's a funnel cloud. Tornado warning. That may be a tornado. It's a tornado right there. Yes, 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 come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, 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 come on. Come on, come on. Come on, 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 come on,
I think it goes without saying, I got a little excited. I saw myself a brief tornado. Right in there, there it is again. This tornado will be rated EF0 and only touches the ground for a brief moment, lofting debris into the air. Very shortly after this tornado dissipates, a larger and more powerful EF-2 touches the Earth. There she is. This tornado has winds exceeding 120 miles an hour and moves quickly northeast into the unchaseable Arbuckle Mountains. I made a quick loop and got back onto the highway to attempt to pursue the storm once more. When I made the turn onto the only road to the storm, a mysterious third tornado seemingly appears out of thin air. This tornado will never be surveyed by the National Weather Service, but is confirmed to touch down by other storm chasers. Still on the ground in there. After the last tornado dissipates, I helplessly try to keep up with the storm. Okay. Well, we're on our turn. And this looks like what I would expect the southeast. We no longer have a road. Well, it's kind of a road. It's a road in some places, and, a, and not a road in other places. Oh boy. Well, here we go. It's like Bob's road. However, I quickly realized that due to poorly maintained roads and terrain troubles, my chase is over. It's maybe one of my favorite roads I've chased down. I love how it just decides to not be pavement anymore. <laughs> I made my way back to civilization and celebrated the day storm chaser style. I'm gonna go get a uh, victory cookie or cheeseburger or something from McDonald's and uh, head home. Hi, welcome to McDonald's. How can I help you?